Thanks very much. Now, let's, let's see if I can work this. Okay. Look, I, I'm really not the person who should be here. It should be the CEO of the company, Andrew Coy, but he's uh, in the United States trying to sell products over at a convention. So I'm standing in for him. Um, I, I was one of the founding inventors of this company, which is a, what you might call a high-tech company. It's a little company that's grown over the last five years. And uh, we are in the business of making magnetic resonance imaging and nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometers. And you might scratch your head and say, what the heck are, are those things? And if you're asking that question, it probably means we're doing the right thing. Because I've got a theory about New Zealand, that is, and that is in the high-tech sector, if we're making something you've heard of, it's probably, we're probably doing the wrong thing because New Zealand is not going to make flat screen television sets. We're going to make respiratory humidifiers and build a $2 billion business selling $400 million a year. That's Fisher and Paykel Healthcare, by the way. It's not us, you know. We'd like to be like you. So we make something kind of weird called nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometers. And um, the, 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 the picture that we've got here, I'll try to see if that works, um, is the kind of picture of New Zealand the way I, I like to think of it. And that is that we've got a challenge in this country. Do we continue to drag more out of our resources in order to make a living? Or do we use our brains to make a living? We don't need to mine our parks. We don't need to grow more from our land. We can actually make a living out of using our brains and preserve our clean, green, beautiful environment. So Macrotech's very much committed to that idea. Um, we have this idea of taking magnetic resonance, which is a long-standing technology, and miniaturising it. So a lot of what we've done is based around modern cell phone technologies, digital radio frequency engineering. Some of the key brains behind this company are people like Robin Dykstra who's a, uh, and Craig Eccles, who are both um, brilliant electronics engineers. So we make complete systems, uh, we export them, and they're based on innovative new technologies. Uh, but basically, we have a radical idea for a, a technology startup. We identify markets, we sell products to customers who want to pay good money for them, we make a profit and we pay taxes. This is a radical idea of the business of startups. <laughs> and so, one of the un unusual things about our company was, and here's an example of one of our products, the, the two megahertz rock core analyzer. We sell that to the petrochemical industry worldwide, and they use that to calibrate the tools that go down the oil wells to measure the uh, producibility of the wells in terms of oil. So it's a very good market for us. One of the unusual things about our company is we started off with practically no capital, but we started off with a product from day one. It wasn't this product, it was an education product, of which we've sold over 100. So we had an income stream, and what we did, we just poured the profits back into the company, and we grew the value of the business that way. That's the basic idea. Um, there is no problem being based in New Zealand, exporting high-tech products around the world. FedEx can get your products anywhere, at least while well, the planes are flying in Europe anyway, um, uh, within a few days. That is not a problem. Uh, but you have to be close to your customers, you have to talk to them. And that's something that people like Andrew and John Trail and others on the business side of this have put a tremendous amount of effort. You've got to get on planes, you've got to travel, you've got to know your customers and know what they want. Um, we've got some remarkable people with some good business heads involved here. Uh, we, we went out and got a, as a chairman of the board, we have a governance structure, but we've got a chairman in the form of Peter Allport, who's a terrifically experienced director. Peter's not a... Uh, a scientist at all. We said we need someone who understands business to really give us that governance and guidance. And Andrew Coy, the CEO, uh, does have a PhD in physics. He was my student once, but he's had 10 years experience out there in the IT sector in the UK and Australia. So he brought that knowledge in. And the rest of the people there are technical people. We've got John Trail, who is a, has a lot of experience in Silicon Valley and startups and so forth. So we've got good business brains at the top, making sure that we scientists are really there uh, servicing markets and servicing customers. That's the key thing. Uh, it's got to be market pull, not technology push. And so we've built up now over um, uh, five years, we're now up to 15 staff in the company, and there's another six who are working at the universities feeding IP into the company, and I'm, I lead the university side of that. Uh, so I'm not actually working for the company. We've had a, uh, some really gr great success with progress, I think, over the years. We started off with great encouragement from the Wellington region, and I think the year that Phil and Ted uh, won uh, the overall... Um, gold category in the Wellington Regional Gold Awards. We were emerging gold, which is a little company starting off. We're very proud of that. Uh, in 2008, we, we cracked a million in sales. In 2009, we doubled that to two million in sales, and that's not bad in, a, in the recession. We're aiming for 2.8 million this year. Uh, the first product we had, we've shipped 100 of now. This uh, rock core analyzer, I think we shipped six last year. That's our new big product, and that's our most valuable product, for about $120,000 each. So our focus now is moving more towards industry applications. We want to grow, we want to be the size of Fisher and Paykel Healthcare in a few years' time. And, but the most wonderful thing about this is we're all having a hell of a lot of fun. 
And as a scientist who's got very late in life involved in commercialization, I just have to say for me it's been a remarkable experience. And I sit there, I go to these company meetings, which we have every two weeks where we get the university team sitting with the company people, and I just sit and watch, sit there and watch these brilliant young people with their incredible ideas, and I sit and gaze and wonder and think, how has all this come about? How lucky I am to be part of it and just to watch it happen. Um, I like to think that some of it's due to uh, work that I've been involved with for 20 years, because a lot of them were my students, but really they don't need me anymore, they're just, they've taken it over. And they're all having fun. They're doing a job that pays them well, they're travelling the world doing it, they're creative, um, and they're doing it in Wellington, which is a great city to live. And I think that is the future of this country, that's the future of this region, is having creative people doing really exciting work and, uh, ex and encouraging other New young New Zealanders to see that the opportunities are here. And that's the real problem for us. Kids growing up in this country and their parents know about the movie industry, they know about Weta Workshop, but they don't know about this new emerging technology sector. And I think when they discover this and realise what a fantastic story it is, they'll realise that they don't have to go to New York to be a success, they don't have to go to London. You can take on the world from Wellington and you can win. And that's really the story of this uh, company. So thank you very much.